Welcome back to, The Age, of the Storm. In this video, I will explain what, and where, the Ark of the Covenant, actually is. Throughout history, this mysterious object has been the subject of both confusion, and debate, with many people dedicating their lives, to searching for it. Taking into account the celestial origins of many of the Bible's characters and stories, I am going to suggest, that the Ark of the Covenant, was also never a literal object. The Ark, as described in Exodus, is a gold-plated wooden container, which is used to house the two stone tablets, on which the Ten Commandments were apparently written. Made to specifications given by God, its lid, has two golden cherubim facing each other, with their wings outstretched. It is from this, mercy seat, that God is said to communicate. To give some clear context, it is important to start with an Old Testament figure, who is central to this story. Moses, never actually existed as a real person. His character, was one of several personifications of the sun, during the astrological age, of Aries, the ram. This can be further understood by reading works such as, Ezekiel the Tragedian, in which he is given similar status, to other solar characters. Exodus 34, 29-35, is almost entirely centered around Moses's face, shining, as the sun. In many works of art, he can also be seen, with ram's horns. This is often attributed, to a mistranslation of a Hebrew word, meaning either, light ray, or animal horns. Both possibilities are equally revealing, of this connection. This is also the origin, of the Jewish tradition, blowing the shofar, or, ram's horn. With this explanation in mind, the next element to the story which must be understood, is the mountain. Although Mount Sinai actually exists in the real world, what Exodus is describing, is an astrological metaphor, rather than a literal landform. In biblical cosmology, the firmament, was believed to be a vast circular dome covering the earth, affixed to which, were the stars. The path of the planets, sun and moon, as they traverse this dome, is the origin of several mountains, as they are described in the Bible. This is also the reason, that many man-made structures have taken on this basic principle. The intention was, to mimic, the mountains of God. Most often, their positioning, was also celestial in origin. It is this dome, and everything contained in it, which is the Ark of the Covenant. The two stone tablets on which the law was written, are describing both the face of the earth where these rules must be adhered to by humans on a daily basis, and also, the stone dome of the firmament, portrayed as a paved work of sapphire, in Exodus 24:10. In this sense, the law is describing the precise movements, and strict routine, of the celestial bodies. Evidence of this can be found in traditional Jewish teachings, describing the stone tablets, also as being made, of sapphire. In addition, the actual number of rules and laws, are far more excessive than the ones that many people are familiar with, and relate to many other areas of everyday life. The Ten Commandments as described in the Bible, are a copy of earlier Egyptian works. Several of these, are only minor adaptations, of Spell 125, of the Book of the Dead. The lid of the Ark, known as the Mercy Seat, can be identified by comparing descriptions of it, to those of Mount Sinai, and also other areas of the Bible, such as the Book of Ezekiel. God appears to Moses, on the mountain, in the form of clouds and fire. This bears a striking resemblance to Ezekiel's vision of God, as clouds and fire, with sapphire above the firmament. The cherubim here, are describing the fixed points of the zodiac, between which God appears. Comparing this to descriptions of the Ark, reveal that God appears between the cherubim, on the mercy seat, also in the form of clouds. In 1 Chronicles, 28-2, the Ark is described as the footstool, of God. Comparing this to Isaiah 66-1, reveals that, heaven is God's throne, and the earth, is his footstool. Further evidence can be found by examining descriptions, of the covers and veils, for the Ark, and tabernacle. They are said to be made of a blue and purple twisted linen, with embroidered cherubim. This is describing the sky, and various constellations. Possibly the most revealing connection, is the use of animal skins to make this material. The Hebrew word used here is, takash. While many people have speculated as to what kind of creature this actually is, the Midrash, reveals it to be a multicolored wild animal, with a single horn. Looking now at the area of the sky, which is home to the constellation, Monoceros, the unicorn, 
we can see the Milky Way, flows directly through here. Although Monoceros is relatively new, this area of the sky, has always been home to a mythological animal constellation, with a single horn. This is the basis, of its pelt being used, in the covering, for the Ark. Hebrews 9.4, reveals that the Ark also contains a pot of manna, and Aaron's rod. This mysterious object, used by Aaron, Moses, and arguably several other biblical figures, was apparently the source of great power. In the book of Exodus, both Moses and Aaron throw down the rod to the floor, and it immediately, turns into a serpent. In Numbers 17.8, the rod is described as, budding, and producing blossom, and seeds, similar to almonds. In reality, this rod, contained in the Ark of the Covenant, is actually an adaptation, of the Tree of Life. Also known as, the World Tree, this is common in many religions, and in different cultures. The manna, as described in the Bible, are the metaphorical fruits, of this tree. Some narratives of events involving Moses, explain that he split the Tree of Knowledge, or World Tree, and gave a section of it to each of the twelve tribes. The rod transforming into a snake when thrown to the ground, is referring to the constellation, Hydra, which circles the southern celestial pole. This constellation plays a part in many myths, and is often depicted, coiled around the roots, of the world tree. Acacia trees, have been linked to the biblical tree of life. This was also said to have been used, in the construction, of the ark. Once it is understood that the ark of the covenant, is an astrological metaphor. We can make more sense of passages such as Revelation 11:19 when it is seen in heaven. I hope the information here has been both interesting and helpful to you. Please like this video to show your support and subscribe to the channel to see more. Also, I would ask that you share these videos and leave any relevant comments and questions below. As always, I will do my best to respond as soon as possible. Thank you for watching.